Hello friends, <coughs> now I will be talking to you about Guillain-Barre syndrome definition. It is a acute onset demyelinating disorder. disorder or demyelinating peripheral neuropathy and it predominantly involves the motor system predominantly sensory may be there sensory may or may not be there And it is a type of, it is a type of ascending polyradiculopathy. And it lead to flaccid paralysis. In fact, this is the most common cause of acute flaccid paralysis. As it always start from lower limb and it progressive upward. So, it is a type of ascending paralysis and it may involve the diaphragm. And diaphragm is the main active muscle for inspiration. Remember, inspiration is active, but expiration is passive. So, if diaphragm is involved and diaphragm contribute to about 80 to 90 percent force for the inspiration, if the diaphragm is involved patient will go into respiratory failure. That is why we have to be very watchful about the involvement of respiration. So, as far as motor are concerned we got it that it lead to flaccid paralysis, paraplegia. In sensory, there may be paresthesias, there may be paresthesias. Especially in the gloves and stocking in distribution. In addition, patient may have involvement of autonomic neuropathy. Due to this, it lead to arrhythmias. Postural hypotension. But one thing which is not involved classically is bladder is not involved. It is a very important feature, bladder is not involved. Because if in a disease where bladder is involved, then you may have to revise your diagnosis that is the standard teaching what they talk about. So, we got the clinical feature now what are the pre disposing factors. 
it is usually associated with HIV infection, Campylobacter, Jejuni infection, infectious mononucleosis, hepatitis. After vaccination, they are some of the predisposing factor. Now, how to investigate this case? Best initial test is CSF examination. In the CF examination, there is cyto albumino dissociation. Proteins are increased more than fifty five milligram percent, but cell count is less than 50 per ml. So, this is what we start with, but most confirmatory tests is nerve conduction velocity, especially of the motor nerves. And one more thing, this cytoalbumino dissociation is usually occurs after 48 hours. Okay. So, that is a limitation of this test, but that is why, that is why the most confirmatory is nerve conduction velocity study. But what else we have to be very watchful, we have to be very watchful about the lung function test. Why? Because if diaphragm is involved, that lead to immediate mortality. That is why these patients should be always managed in the intensive care unit where we have the facility of ventilation. So, to assess the lung function test or pulmonary function test, pulmonary function test or sometimes they call it lung function test, we have to be force, vital capacity and inspiratory, inspiratory peak pressure. These are the parameters that we have to measure. Why we talk about inspiratory peak pressure? Because diaphragm is involved in, in inspiration, right. Now, how to treat this case. Physiotherapy is mandatory because it is a type of flaccid paralysis, there is no tone, no reflexes. So, you have to give to prevent the muscle atrophy and of course, to prevent the deep vein thrombosis, if you are, if patient is lying on the bed for a long time, it can be disposed. So, because of flaccid paralysis, physiotherapy is very important. Number two, in acute cases, you can give intravenous immunoglobulin or plasma phenesis. You can give either of two, both are equally effective, but they are never given together. Okay. So, either you can give, this you can do. Now, as far as uh, uh, what the prognosis of the case? Prognosis of the case, a 
around 60 percent recover fully, full recovery. Around to 10 to 15 percent cases, they have incomplete recovery and around 5 percent mortality occurs. The cause of mortality is mortality. Cause is respiratory failure, and autonomic neuropathy, which can lead to arrhythmia and one extra information for you. Steroid have no role in the treatment, corticosteroid no role in treatment. So, this all about Guillain-Barre syndrome. Thank you very much.